Halo Reach is finally out on PC and on the Xbox One through the Master Chief Collection. And it's been a really awesome walk through memory lane, playing on a lot of these old maps that we all know and remember from back in the good old days. And while honestly, Halo Reach has such a great batch of maps, and when compared to other gaming franchises, Halo Reach even stands out with its worst maps still being pretty good. Now, while back, we ranked every single Halo 3 map, and this is kind of a part of a ultimate list that we plan on doing where we rank every single Halo map across the entire franchise. So of course, this list is gonna be completely based on Luke and I's own personal experiences. And we gotta say with a disclaimer at the beginning, we definitely come from more casual play styles. We never really jumped heavily into competitive. We really were into more custom games and just messing around in campaigns in Halo. So this will be our list for now. However, if you disagree with our list, you can leave a comment with where you would move things around and we're gonna consider what our community thinks in the comments of all of these videos before we make our ultimate video where we rank every single Halo map across the games. So that being said, let's go ahead and look at what we're thinking for our list. Starting things off at the bottom of our list, it's really hard to pick one level that we think is the absolute worst when it comes down to Halo Reach. Like we said, the worst maps are still pretty good, but something has to get put down here. And honestly, we went ahead and picked Condemned for this. It was part of the Noble DLC. And honestly, while this map works okay, there's just nothing special enough about it or iconic enough about it that maybe wants us to really think highly of this level in any other way. It plays okay, and there's this middle room that's kind of interesting with the light gravity, but other levels did the different types of gravity better than this one, so we're gonna go ahead and put it down here. Next on our list, we're gonna go ahead and put Zealot down here, and while we are fans of the levels Midship and Heretic, and this level obviously draws inspiration from it, it definitely doesn't feel like an exact remake, and it's not really a remake as it's much more spread out and things are a lot bigger, making things just seem a little bit out of place from the arena type core gameplay that we were more used to when Halo Reach came around. We do really like the tubes that take you up to the upper levels, the zero gravity stuff's cool, and this level is still fun for a lot of game types, but it's definitely not necessarily as iconic as the versions in previous Halo games. Next on our list, going up to rank 18, we're gonna go ahead and put Solitary here. This was part of the Halo Anniversary pack. This map is a remake of an iconic Halo 1 level, and honestly, aesthetically speaking, the level's really great. However, we're just not really fans of these levels that just have have so many floors going up to the top without having necessarily the best sight lines like we see in other Halo levels that at least try to take on this concept. This one worked well in the original Halo, and actually remakes of this level in other Halo games like Halo 5 worked pretty well here, but for Halo Reach, it just didn't really resonate with us the way that we hoped it would. Next, we're gonna go ahead and put the level Breakpoint on our list. Honestly, Breakpoint had a lot of potential when Bungie announced it to release it because it was another invasion map, and I was so so excited because I was a huge fan of Invasion. However, for some reason, this level just lacks the same energy that the other main Invasion maps had, and the flow of this one just seems really off. The fact that you have to carry a bomb in the second phase to blow up a wall really seems to disrupt gameplay, and it's just not the favorable Invasion choice. Coming back to this map and playing it in the MCC, it's pretty much exactly as underwhelming as I remember it being way back in the day. Next, we're gonna go ahead and put Ridgeline on this list. Now, Ridgeline on its own is a very okay map. I actually enjoyed it quite a bit back when it released. However, when the Master Chief Collection came out and I was able to go through and play all of the Halo levels and maps through the years, honestly, when you compare it side by side with what it's being a remake of Timberland, it's so much worse. Timberland was this huge open level that was great for vehicles, sniping, and there was some really interesting sight lines, and it was a fan favorite for different types of games where you just messed around. It almost could have been on par with Blood Gulch had it had a more more generalized release. But when they brought it back for the anniversary DLC, they really just butchered it, making it so much smaller and adding trees blocking those popular sight lines. So ultimately, it just didn't translate as well in Halo Reach. So it's why it's kind of sitting down here at more of the mediocre range of maps. Next, we wanted to put Anchor 9 on our list. This level is okay. There's some fun moments that you can definitely have playing games like SWAT or some more competitive type games if you're feeling up for it. But similar to why we have 
had Condemned so low on this list, there's just nothing necessarily stand out about this level. It doesn't feel very unique. There is the outdoor section, which is okay, and you can mess around up there, and the skybox is pretty, but there's no real feeling of substance in this level, so we're gonna go ahead and leave it down here at number 15 on our list. Now, as we approach the top levels left, we wanted to talk about Highlands. This map is really interesting because it is a really open area, and it's fun for games like Big Team Battle. It doesn't really translate as well in smaller types of games, and for some reason, the skybox is really dumb. I'm like, there's a bunch of reds and blues trying to fight each other at this base, while the planet just right over there is getting completely glassed. I always thought this was a really weird concept. Next, we wanted to look at Tempest, and this was actually a map I really didn't like originally when it came out. However, this one's really grown on me, especially since it being included in regular rotation in the Master Chief Collection. It honestly just plays really, really well with Reach for some reason, and we played a game of Infection that honestly kind of reignited my love for Infection just because of this one level alone. So we had to put it up a little bit higher than we originally planned, and Tempest is a pretty good remake. Next, we wanted to do Powerhouse, and this map is kind of iconic because I remember playing this map way back in the beta days of Halo Reach. This was my first ever Reach experience when that beta dropped with my ODST disc. I don't think it's one of the best maps for games like Slayer or other main type competitive maps. I'm not too sure what the competitive community feels. However, I remember playing games like Headhunter on this map and it just makes me really miss that game type and it was a lot of fun back then and I think it's a good map still. And the next map is Penance and if you're wondering why you're hearing my voice now, it's because Elijah forgot to record this map and so I'm just gonna talk about it real quick. It's another Halo CE anniversary map pack map and the remake of the classic Halo CE map Damnation. And while this map might be equally high as Solitary, since there's only like two levels essentially, it actually works really well here. So there's no in-between layers or anything, there's just the top layer and the bottom layer and it's really fun on Infection too. And I just like to play this map personally too, so we're just gonna put it right here. Now in this next one, Luke and I debated a lot about how this map can be in the top 10 maps while Solitary is all the way down where it is. However, the map Sword Base is a pretty cool level and we really like this map. It honestly broke away from the typical arena style that Halo was popular for, but while we've criticized Halo Reach for breaking away from that style, it's done well enough here where it actually works in its own way. It does this longer type setup where you have really great sight lines across the rooms, so even as you raise higher up in the Sword Base and you take the stairs going to higher levels, there's always ways that you can run flanks and you can shoot across. So ultimately, Sword Base has been a pretty fun experience. Next on our list, we wanted to look at High Noon, and honestly, there's a lot of criticism about the Hang'em High and all of its remakes that have come out over the years, and of course the debate whether or not Longshore counts as a real Hang'em High inspired remake or not. However, if we're gonna just look at the true-to-form remakes, we do think this is the best version of this map that we have seen. The skybox is really nice, and it can be really fun for some type of long range, and since there's so many arena maps that have kind of been mixed in, especially after the DLC released, High Noon works out well because it's something different and much more range than anything else that Reach has to offer, making it make sense why this map is included. Next on our list, we wanted to include the level Reflection, coming in at number 8 on our list. Now, Reflection is actually a remake of a popular map in Halo 2 called Ivory Tower. However, while Ivory Tower was really just an okay map back in Halo 2, it's really interesting how they brought this map back for Halo Reach. They completely redesigned it while keeping the core layout the same, and this map just works really well with the Reach mechanics. The movement system seems to almost be built around this level, and it's funny to think that this level existed so many years ago in Halo 2. Honestly, I think there's a lot of people who can get behind Reflection and just like this level a lot. Next on our list, we have Countdown, and this is a level that a lot of people might be more decisive on just because this level's kind of hated by some people and loved by others, but honestly, I remember playing this level so many times back in the day, and it kind of in the earlier days of Reach's run was one of the main levels you would play on when playing multiplayer that wasn't on Forge World. It definitely had this new feeling to it because aesthetically speaking, it wasn't necessarily something very commonplace for Halo to have structures that looked like this, and it worked out pretty well, and ultimately, 
I personally had a good experience on it and so did Luke. So we wanted to include it in the top 10 either way. Now coming in at number six, we have Boneyard and this level is a pretty fun invasion map. It's definitely really big, but I definitely also remember having a ton of fun playing either invasion normally where you have the Spartans defending off against the elites and the elites having to try to push through phase by phase to get the information or whatever they needed to get and escape with it. And it was pretty fun here. It's not the best invasion map, but it's definitely a great one. Boardwalk is another one of these maps that a lot of people are going to hate and we're putting it here at number five on our list. But personally, Boardwalk was a really fun map, especially if you played Infection when Infection got dropped into rotation initially in Reach. This level was so much fun for Infection just because of the way you could navigate, but also when you're a zombie, it was really cool how you could just drop in and just completely surprise the survivors. And that was really cool. Now, there were some exploits on this level, which probably stop it from being as high high on the list as it could have been, but just because of the infection experience I had on this level alone, we definitely really liked Boardwalk and think it deserves to be up here. Number four is Breakneck, which is a remake of the popular Halo 2 level, and honestly, Breakneck is just fun to play on. You can jump in, jump in some warthogs, or just run around on foot and get up to a high level to try to shoot across at other people. It's very chaotic at times, and it definitely doesn't play like any other Halo Reach map. It feels like the classic Halo 2 experience, and it's really cool that for once, while Halo Reach had so many different mechanics, this map actually plays more similarly to how it originally was intended to play back in Halo 2, even if you're playing on Reach. And that's something really unique, especially because this map also has an amazing touch up from what it looked like back in the day. And because of that, we couldn't help but to put this one in at number four on our list. But now we're getting into top three territory. So we got to really pick now which maps we thought were the best of the best. On number three, we're going to put Battle Canyon. We we were huge fans of Beaver Creek back in the day, or Battle Creek, whatever you called it, depending on which Halo you were playing. And this map is kind of one of those maps that should have probably been included in every Halo release. And since it was finally included in Reach, after it not being in Halo 3 or in the base game of Halo Reach, it was a welcome addition. And what's even cooler is they actually fixed something that was kind of an issue back in the day, where they moved the teleporters into a back room, and it really helped open up the space and make the level more balanced allowing for better flanking routes without necessarily having to get choked by someone kind of watching a specific lane. And because of that, we couldn't help but to put it in the top three. Number two on our list goes to Spire, which is our favorite pick when it comes to invasion. And in general, big team battle was so much fun on this level. Now, this map is taken right out of one of the campaign missions, which is fine. But what's really awesome about it is just the way that the invasion system works here. And we've talked a little bit about invasion already. Ready, we really, really appreciated how it worked on Spire and we felt like everything you were doing made sense. You have to move up to the first relay to get the shields down so you can move to the actual Spire. Then you have to do something inside to get the elevators working to take you to the top. Then you have to take the core and escape with it. It felt like an actual war between the Spartans and the elites. And there was like some sort of reason why they're actually fighting. And besides that, the gameplay is fun and it's strategic and it's just different from the standard type of gameplay you typically see when you play Halo Reach. And this map just felt like a great example as to why this level works here. Between the new weapons you get as you progress or vehicles flying around, it's fun nonetheless. But finally, we had to go ahead and put number one on our list, Forge World, yet again. Now, we were debating whether or not we were going to break up Forge World and talk about all of the individual multiplayer maps individually or try to talk about just the Forge World itself. And we chose to just put Forge World by itself, mostly because while those maps are included as base set maps, they're forge objects and they're movable, editable, and whatnot. Now, one thing that was awesome is when Halo Reach released, they did include a couple of base set forge maps, especially the ones that were based off of classic Halo levels that people knew and loved from the arena days of Halo 2. And it was really cool to see how they translated that. But it also paved the way for a forge community to be able to make any map. And there were so many other maps that were later brought back through fan creations of previous Halo maps that 
didn't quite make the cut into this game. It was a cool way to kind of keep the legacy of older maps alive through Halo Reach and showcased what Forge had to offer. Now Forge World goes so much further than just recreating old maps. People created new maps, then there was the whole custom game thing which was so important to players like Luke and I who were more casual and we finally got our Blood Gulch back. It was so nice to finally see it and while it is different, you're not in the canyon anymore, you still get the same experience and vibes and it was such a great addition to choose the layout of Blood Gulch as one of the major areas of Forge World. And it's just so cool. This level is so awesome. We really hope they bring this one back in Halo Infinite. Just imagine how awesome Halo Infinite would be. No matter how bad Infinite could get and how many bad reviews it could get, we could always be like, well, at least it has Forge World. And that's why Forge World needs to be in Halo Infinite. But like we said, this is just our opinion. This was kind of our first main discussion. We are already making adjustments to our list from the Halo 3 video based off of the comment feedback we got. We had some really great feedback. So make sure you guys let us know what you would suggest changing, moving around. Are we completely off on a couple of maps? We're open for reasons why and whatnot. So leave a comment down below. We would really appreciate it. You can even hit the like button if you see a comment that you agree with if you don't want to type your whole thing out. But that's it for today, guys. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys all next time with a brand new video. Bye, guys.